Raise your hand if you've ever done something that gave your parents a heart attack. <laughs> in Nepal, my parents taught out of school in Pokhara, and I had a babysitter who took care of me. One day, my babysitter went next door to get something while I was taking a nap. When I woke up and saw that no one was there with me, I decided to run away to my parents' work as a 22-month-old baby. <laughs> the walking distance from my townhouse to my parents' work was about 12 minutes, but it took me longer, mostly because I waddled through a small forest. <laughs> When I showed up at my parents' school, I looked horrific. I was covered in leeches from neck to toe, and I was completely drenched because it was raining while I was making my way to the school. Questions and concerns filled my parents' minds, but they were just glad that I was safe in their arms and alive. <laughs> I only remember or believe that story because my mom has told me about it at least a million times. Whenever she sits me down and retells the story, I feel empty. I always wondered why I didn't feel a sense of belonging when I heard stories of Nepal, because I thought that it was my home. But what is home? It's where the heart is, right? At least that's what all of our home decor says. <laughs> a home is a place where you have a soul connection to. Whenever you think of your home, your eyes light up and you feel as if your heart will explode because it's full of fondness. As I got older, I realized that the reason why I didn't feel connected to Nepal was because it was not my home. And one thing about home is that people cannot tell you where it is. Sadly, the world doesn't work the way we want it to and people do try to tell you where it is, even though it shouldn't be their place. That's what exactly the Bhutanese government did to my family, the Lhotshampa. Bhutanese with Nepali heritage, forcefully telling them where their home is supposed to be. In the 1900s, the Bhutanese government began seeing their Bhutanese population with Nepali ancestry as a demographic and cultural threat. There were linguistic and cultural restrictions placed upon them in 1989 because of a policy called the One Nation, One People. Bhutanese population with Nepali ancestry were forced to speak Jonka, Bhutan's national language in their classrooms. And they were also forced to follow the Driglam Namja, Bhutan's national dress code. In the 1990s, reforms by the Bhutanese with Nepali heritage increased, but so did the torture that they faced from the government. My mom's family was privileged because my grandpa was a military veteran, so they didn't receive the gruesome threats that most Lochampa faced. But my mom did witness people getting their hands tied to their backs and heard their piercing screams as they got shoved into vehicles to go to jail. She also heard horrific stories of government officials assaulting innocent women from neighboring villages. My own father's family faced continuous verbal abuse from the government. The police would show up at their house every single day because my dad's uncle was an ex-prisoner. Thankfully, my parents were able to escape the terror and move to Nepal, where they established their lives in Bhutanese refugee camps. They went to school, got jobs, met each other, and had me, and got married. <laughs> like me, they never considered Nepal as their home, 
Their heart was always in Bhutan. Bhutan was their home. At different times in my life, I've been told where my home is supposed to be. In 2017, my Nepali dance group performed at an event. After performing, we got to socialize with guests of the event, and I ended up having a conversation with a middle-aged woman. I thought that the conversation was going well until she heard me talk in Nepali to one of my friends. Immediately, she asked me if I was born here, in America, and I said, no. Then, in the most condescending, hurtful voice, she said, Wow, you speak great English for an immigrant. Of course I speak great English for an immigrant. I immigrated here from Nepal when I was only three years old. I couldn't even speak Nepali properly. You might think that she was complimenting me, but in my mind, she was telling me that I didn't belong here because I wasn't born in a Nepal in America. I would love to tell you my stories of how I've been told, go back to your country, that I am not a true American, and how I should rot in hell. But we would be here till midnight, and I don't think you want to stay that long. Despite the hate I've received in America, it's still my home. Nepal made a Bumio. Nepal is my birthplace, but it's not my place. America is my place. In September 2009, I landed in Boise, Idaho. In April 2013, I set foot into Sioux Falls, South Dakota. And ever since then, it's been my home. I received numerous opportunities and made unforgettable memories here. I've met incredible people who are the reason that I wake up every day being thankful to be alive. I've met people who remind me every single second of my life that I am worth something. I still follow Nepali traditions speak the language, and respect and follow Nepali religions. But I've never experienced Nepal the way I've experienced America. In life, you will meet people like the lady I met at a dance event in 2017 who will say something, but her tone and the way she says things will mean something else to you. You will meet people like the Bhutanese government who will do anything in their power to take the love for your home out of you. But you cannot, and I repeat, cannot let those people rip your heart out of your chest and move it to an unfamiliar place because home is where the heart is, not where people tell you it is.